Hello people, my name is Maris and today I'm going to show you one of the cameras in my collection namely a pre-war medium format folder uh, produced by Zeiss Icon uh, this particular model is Zeiss Icon Iconta 520-2 this is uh, the very first model that came on the market that used Iconta name uh, Zeiss Icon uh, had very similar cameras in production uh, before that in the late 1920s there was a Icoret and a Cocoret very very similar cameras just different name the Iconta uh, this particular model came along I believe in the second half of 1929 I actually have a, a 1929 Saisi Conta catalog and uh, this model is, is not in it. The catalog is probably produced in the, in, the, in the early part of 1929. But it's already included in the 1930 catalog and up to 1933. By 1934 this model was already out of production it was replaced by a very similar model uh, but with a lens where the maximum aperture was 4.5 well, this lens is a Novar Anastigmat maximum aperture is f6.3 and it goes all the way to f32 stepsless stepless the shutter is a bearable shutter has only three time speeds there is one twenty-fifth of a second one fiftieth of a second and one hundredth of a second there is also bulb mode and there is a time mode time mode basically is that you push the shutter once and the shutter will open you push it a second time and it will close so it's not like the ball mode where you have to keep your finger on the shutter button to keep the, the shutter open uh, you don't have to pre-cock the shutter like it's usually the case it will cock itself simply by pushing the lever that's it that's how you take the picture very simple the composing you can for the composing you can use uh, either this brilliant finder that's how they call these type of finders there is just it's just a little mirror box two lenses you look through it it actually works fairly well you can turn it when you use the camera in landscape mode and like this when you use it in portrait mode now there is also a an additional viewfinder just two frames there is no no glass in it you just look look through these two frames to compose the picture it also works works actually pretty good takes 120 roll film there is no double exposure prevention just red window you advance the film by turning this key here Keep an eye on the numbers in the window. Advance the film until you see the next window or next uh, number in the window. Compose your shot. Push the shutter. And if you forget to advance the film, you will have, if you push the shutter again, you will have a double exposure. To close the camera, simply push on these two struts here you have to push on both sides brilliant window has to be uh, portrait position close the camera and open it again you just push on this button here there is a little kickstand you can put the camera on some flat surface use it as a tripod 
kind of. It has actually two tripod sockets, one here, one here. And the thread in it is, is the modern one. You can just use a modern tripod uh, foot. To open the film back, there is a little little knob. Just open like this. You can see it's all metal construction. Very simple. Basically, the technology in this camera is very very simple. It's it's basically the same as in uh, cameras that were around already at the end of the 19th century. You know this. The body simply, you know, it's just there is only film in it. There is nothing else. Everything else of interest is basically right here. Lens, shutter. This lens can be removed from the body very simply. You could mount it to even a large format camera. I guess I'm not sure. If the image image circle that it uh, projects is large enough for let's say a four by five camera, but you could mount it perhaps to a camera like Horseman, for example, you could mount this this lens. Uh, my particular camera, this one, was produced in 1930, so it's an an early one. I was able to find it out thanks to the wonderful folks at uh, Zeiss Econ medium format Flickr group. Uh, the serial number starts with an S that indicates that it's a 1930 production. And uh, this camera uh, in 1932 this camera uh, was listed the price uh, in the catalog was 43 Reichsmarks now the more expensive uh, Tessar equipped version was 99 rice marks, so more than twice as expensive. And if we compare it uh, to the famous Contax, you know the 35 millimeter rangefinder, uh, nowadays a collector's item, they go for a lot of money. Contax also came along in 1932, and the catalog price was 245 Reichsmarks for the cheaper uh, version with f3.5 lens and the uh, more expensive version with f2.8 was 270 Reichsmarks so it was so the 35 mm contacts was like six times as expensive as this camera so this camera can be seen as a you know, camera that was bought by just normal middle-class people for their everyday snapshots back then most people they didn't enlarge the photos just the 6x9 frame that this the 6x9 centimeter frame that this camera takes they usually contact printed them so that the final image on paper was also just 6x9 centimeters on one roll you'll take eight pictures luckily medium format film is still around. Now the heyday of these types of cameras, the, the, the folders, medium format folders, was in the first half of the of the 20th century. Uh, probably the, one of the earliest examples that's very well known is Kodak Folding Brownie number two that came allowed came along I believe in 1909 and uh, by the time 1960s came along these cameras were out of fashion also by 1960s basically all medium format uh, consumer cameras consumer grade cameras uh, were no longer popular they went out of production Probably because 35 millimeter cameras they were, were getting better and better all the time. 35 millimeter film was getting better. So I believe the the size Econ plant in uh, at least the West German size Econ plant produced the last Econta model in 1959. 
there was also uh, size icon in the uh, eastern in, in East uh, Germany you know when Germany lost the war the Soviet uh, territory or the Soviet uh, held territory became East Germany uh, and the original Zeiss Econ factory was actually in Dresden that that ended up in the, in, in East Germany but uh, the East German company lost the rights to the Econta name so they, they they produced a very similar camera after the war that was named uh, that was called Ercona but otherwise very similar apparently also of very good quality so if you find one you know, buy it it's not really any worse than the West Western West German counterparts About the lens in this camera, uh, this Novar Anastigmat is a triplet, uncoated. I think coating, if I remember correctly, uh, was even uh, like a military secret. It was invented by Germans. Uh, so only became widely uh, used after the war, after the Second World War. So it's an uncoated triplet. And actually, I prefer this triplet uh, over uh, a Tessar. I have a, another camera from 1930, 1930s that has the Tessar lens. And Tessar, you know, while being optically superior, it produces images that look modern. There is no real difference, you know, whether you use a camera from, let's say, produced in the 90s or you use this 1930 era Tessar the pictures look pretty much the same whereas this triplet produces photos that are somehow clearly old-fashioned it has this specific look to them this kind of vintage look which is very nice I will show you a couple of photos that I've taken with this camera. The first one uh, is a photo taken on Ilford Delta 100 film, developed uh, myself in uh, ID11 uh, developer. Just a few friends of mine. Now the second one, this one, uh, goose in a snowstorm. Uh, was shot on Ilford XP2 Super. That's a black and white film that uh, has to be developed in C41 color uh, process. And uh, the last one, just a nice summer day. Uh, I shot this photo last summer on Kodak Portra 160. And as you can see, despite the fact that it's a uh, uncoated simple triplet lens the colors are reproduced beautifully no issues whatsoever oh yeah and then uh, another thing the size of this camera one reason why probably these folders were very popular also is they were quite portable you know, certainly when compared to many other camera types around back then, this camera is basically like a very fat wallet. You could fit it easily into your the, the inner pocket of your jacket or even back pocket of your jeans. So when we compare it to a 35 millimeter camera, it's 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 longer. But if you look like this, I mean, you can see it's clearly much more pocketable than something like this so that was my small review of size Econi Conta if you have any questions leave a comment below and see you next time